the big news broke Thursday night. Grant Fisher, the American record holder in the 3,000, 5,000, and 10,000 meters, has decided after four years to call it quits with the Bowerman Track Club. He is moving on. Future plans to be announced. We will break that down from all angles. Well, when you found out the news, what was your reaction? Was this a surprise or are you like, no, this makes sense? I thought, RAP Bowerman. This is the end of the Bowerman Track Club. That was sort of my honest reaction. With, what, about, I don't know, 14 hours to think about it a little more. I might have jumped the gun a little bit. But I started thinking, who's still in the Bowerman Track Club? Who's really going to move the needle? Grant Fisher was by far my number one. Justin Knight, I thought, was going to train with him. You still got Mohamed. I'm talking on the men's side. A little reassessment. You still got Shalane Flanagan there. I think she's a big pull. Maybe this morphs into more of a women's club. But this was huge, huge news. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I was a fan of the Bowerman Track Club. Maybe I should say I'm a fan of... I am a fan. But I want to see what Grant Fish, where he's going, what's he going to do, and what happens. We have been, despite being a fan of the Bowerman Track Club, I've been saying Evan Jager should have left the Bowerman Track Club a long time ago. Sometimes things are stagnant. You need to get a new environment and train. Things haven't really been that stagnant for Grant Fisher, but for whatever reason, he decided to take control of his career. We didn't see people really do that. Oh, sure, John, you've got a list of people who all left the Bowerman Track Club. None of them were at the top of their game, John. They were all in the back half of their careers whatever you want to say. Grant Fisher is America's top long distance runner. And he just left his training environment in his peak. Huge, huge news. I'm going to push back on that. I mean, Sinclair Johnson left even before she was in her prime and won the U S title the next year. Gabrielle Debu Stafford was in her prime when she left. Woody Kincaid was running as fast as times ever this year. I don't know if it's fair to say they all left in the back half of their careers, but your larger point about Grant Fisher being in his prime, that's true. And that is why I don't think, I mean, I'm not going to say RIP Bauman, but this is a blow. This is a guy who had been running well under Jerry Schumacher. Okay, he was a bit injured this year, but he comes back and runs 725 in his last race of the season. He's going into his prime Olympics. This is going to be his best shot to win an Olympic medal is Paris 2024. And he's decided that despite running fast, despite running American records, despite finishing fourth at the Worlds and fifth at the Olympics, Jerry Schumacher is not the guy to coach him to an Olympic medal. That is a huge, huge decision. And I'm really eager to hear what went into this because it is a blow to Bowman to lose, you know, America's America's sweetheart. That's how he was described by one coach to me yesterday in terms of distance running right now. All right, John, let me ask you, what were your, how did you learn the news and what were your thoughts? I kind of had an inkling earlier this week because someone had mentioned a rumor about it, but it it was yet to be confirmed and I didn't want to start going crazy or anything like that. I didn't share this rumor with Robin and Weldon. I wasn't sure if you'd be able to keep it off the message boards, but I I wanted to be sure before we said anything. And so when I heard the news, I was like, oh, well, I, I wasn't expecting this to break for another week or two, but... When I first heard the rumor, I was stunned because I was like, this guy, it's not like he's been running bad under Jerry Schumacher. He's come close to meddling. He's run times faster than any American ever has. I was like, what, what's, I, I mean, is he unhappy? I was curious what he was unhappy about. From what I understand, he was not thrilled about the move to Eugene. I don't think very, I'm not sure if any members of the team were thrilled about that move. But is that only it? Or were there other reasons that went into this? Because on the track, he's been pretty darn good. And I am i was fairly confident if he stuck it out with Jerry, we could see him meddling next year or meddling in Tokyo in 2025. He was going to be in contention. And I think similarly to Mohamed. Mohamed was in the mix for a while. And then he finally got medals in Doha and Tokyo. I could have seen Grant Fisher following that same path. But for whatever reason, he's decided... He doesn't want to be a part of it. So when I heard the news earlier this week, yes, I was stunned. 
This will be your last podcast for two weeks, John Suspension. I mean, well, then when I found out that he had heard this and didn't even bother to tell us, what do I say that the Supporters Club is? The Supporters Club, I say, is always like, sometimes it's unconfirmed stuff, but it's stuff that I hear and it's what I would tell you in a bar. And John won't even do that with his own bosses. The men that, that, that provide, we put the food on your table, John, every night when you eat. Because I'm worried Jeez. you'd be spilling the beans about something that I wasn't even in a position to report and that I had one rumor from one source. So I... I just wanted to be careful about this, Robert. Well, I don't use this word often, but Judas. <laughs> Anyways, when I think when I heard it, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is a lot bigger than the other moves. I mean, th- let's be honest. Like, we're a winner-take-all society, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look on it. This guy's much higher to me than a Kincaid or... This is just basically about anyone in the U.S. But my, I think my first thought was like, I'm not going to lie, like, maybe gut instinct was like, what an idiot? An Olympic year? Are you kidding me? And then I was like, wait a minute, you know me, I'm, I like to be contrarian. And I even thought with my own self, like, no, what, what does Rojo always say? When you change coaches, the first year, you're going to do, ma- do well no matter what. You're getting a different stimulus. You know, so I was initially shocked because 33 days ago he set the American record in 3,000. But the more I thought about, I was like, I just can't believe you take that risk in Olympic year. You think you might wait for the Olympics and then try it afterwards? But then I thought, well, according to me, the first year, no matter who he goes to, he's going to run well, and that would work. Now that I'm hearing some rumors about maybe being self-coached and stuff like that, I don't like that. I guess he's a smart guy. I'd like him to be in some sort of this is the problem. Like who's he going to train with? Who's going to be doing workouts with him? I just think that I guess Weldon got fourth in the country twice with no, no workout partners, no onsite coach. So it can be done. But I'm like, if you're used to that, that seems like a big transition to me. Um, well, it's a risk, Robert, but it's also a risk. Like, again, this is his prime Olympic. So, he doesn't want to show up and say, Hey, I've got an inkling that things haven't really been going right. I'm not totally comfortable here anymore. And s- sitting there after Paris saying, man, I should have changed coaches then, you know, he is doing it now. And I, I think he's got a lot of respect for Jerry Schumacher and Bowman. And, you know, he's got close bonds with some of the people, Sean McGordy, longtime teammate. You know, I, I don't, I think this is like when Woody Kincaid left, it's not like there's, bad it didn't seem to me that there's bad blood but certainly it's a major decision this is something grant's thought about carefully now did woody leave when jerry took the oregon job or was that the year before jerry took the oregon job in the summer of 2022 and woody left in the fall of 2022 so that's the other thing let's try to think like we don't know we've put a word out to his agent try to speak to to Grant about why he left. Originally, I was thinking, and I put this in the message board, hey, Grant's tired of Eugene, as, as aren't we all? Like, I'm so tired of going to Eugene to every meet. It's clear to me that most, if not as you said earlier, not all, or all of the people did not want to move to Eugene. These are pros. There's more to do in Portland. They're post-college athletes. You know, not that they have a lot of time for a social life, but doing something else besides running. It's easier to do as a 25-year-old in Portland than it is in Eugene. But let's be real so, here, Robert. How much time are they spending in Eugene? During the track season, they're at altitude camp all the time. I I can understand wanting to be in Portland as a young person instead of Eugene. But I can't imagine that's the sole reason here. Because during the season, they're in Europe or they're in Park City. They're, they're not in Eugene all that much once we get to the spring or even the start of 2024. Well, correct. But once they moved to Eugene, I mean, look at the number of people that have bolted. Mark Scott, Grant, Kincaid. I could keep going. And Pascal Dobert, the assistant coach, you know, joined the Puma Elite team. He went and joined the Craigs, who, you know, used to be tied to the Bowerman. And, you know, you know, basically, he's like, I didn't want to go to Eugene. So I don't know if it's just the Eugene thing because you think you could deal with that for another six months because of the Olympics. It could also be a bigger thing of like, okay, we're no longer his soul, Jerry's sole focus. The thing is, like, as, as long as you're 
designing the workouts, I don't know, is that that big of a deal? Maybe they just feel like they're not important anymore. I don't know. Maybe maybe psychologically it was good to realize Jerry was all in on you and now he's got recruiting, Oregon kids, and this. But, you know, there, there's some ridiculous threads on the message board about where Grant Fisher is going. Let me clear that up right now. He's not joining OAC. He's not joining Gert Ingebrigtsen. Well, I guess Gert Ingebrigtsen would be a possibility, but he can't join another group because he's under contract with Nike. So unless they're a free agent coach or that, there's well, no way the Nike deal ends at the end of 2023. It's going to go through 2024. He could join Gert Ingebrigtsen. He's not going to, but the the message board has had a field day about this. They've, seen, they've been saying, oh, he's going to join Mike Smith. He's going to join OAC. He's going to join Gert. He's going to join Alberto. He's going to join Rojo. I mean... It's kind of wild. Part of me would like him to do a LeBron James style decision where he goes on camera and says, I'll be taking my talents to whatever city. It's kind of similar point in his career, right? LeBron James, summer 2010, he was 25 years old. Grant Fish is 26. Just about in his prime. LeBron James had been in Cleveland. He'd made the finals. He'd won some MVPs. Didn't get that ring. He went to South Beach. And won two titles. Grant Fisher, I kind of view it as similar. He's got American records, but he doesn't have the hardware at the global championships. Where's he going to go that he wants to... He, I don't think he's going to team up. I mean, it would be interesting. What if he? Who would he team up with? It'd be like him and Yard Nagus. They're like, okay, we're actually both leaving our teams and we're going to join some new coach in some new city. Like, that would be crazy. Yard Nagus, Grant Fisher, Fred Curley all go to Miami and try to win a title together. Okay, now I'm really getting silly. You are getting silly, and the decision was one of the worst things in the history of professional sports. 